Weird Times, Welcome Anthony. to Drinking Bros weird Sports, times, brought to What's you weird? by KillCliffCBD.com. On television last night, on my television screen, inside of my living room, where my wife and my children sleep. And he was saying, I don't know if there's going to be a 2020 baseball season. And he called it, quote unquote, an unbelievable disaster. Um, well, it's an unbelievable disaster if it doesn't happen, that's for sure, especially for baseball. I mean, after 94, uh, they lost a fuckload of fans. Yeah. Probably permanently. Like, every time you have an event like that, you lose that fan. Maybe you can win them back, but it costs a lot more money, at least from a marketing perspective, to create a new customer or win back an old customer than it does just to keep one, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're arguing over money and time and things like that, how to prorate salaries and all this other bullshit. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that if uh, the season doesn't, then it's an unmitigated disaster. Yeah, for, and for I don't know how they recover from this. I don't either, unless they start letting people do steroids again. What's the, what's the, the team that uh, pounds it into the ground? What do, we, what do we call that team? Keep pounding? Who is that? What are you talking about? Steelers? Is it the Steelers keep pounding? Oh, it's our fucking neighbors. I'm kidding. This is the most facetious I've ever been on this show. Tell that guy to shut the fuck up or we're cutting off his goddamn arms with a chainsaw like it's fucking Scarface out there. Um, seriously, I, I don't know what the fuck that is outside the building. It's as if somebody just put on a helmet and is just ramming into the wall. Um, that's the loudest shit of all time. Uh, if baseball doesn't come back, I don't know if it survives. Because you're not going to have steroids to save it. And ironically, Sunday nights um, was the documentary of McGuire and Sosa mm -hmm. saving baseball. That doesn't exist anymore. You're not going to be able to do steroids and try to fucking win back the fans. The only thing that I could see is to maybe try to juice the ball. Well, they did that last year. Right? So that's done. And nobody still was able to hit 60 home runs. So... I don't know how I feel about that whole home run record, though, to be honest. I think they're like the whole thing that went down in 61 with Roger Maris, like, oh, he played fucking a couple more games. Like, look, dude, do you think Babe Ruth played against the same talent that Roger Maris did? There's no fucking way. Like, at the very beginning of Babe Ruth's career, it was just the Major League Baseball was just transitioning away from pitching being a courtesy. Like, you just threw the ball to the plate and the guy fucking rail it. Right. That's why Cy Young was able to pitch 700 fucking games or whatever. And, Actually, more than that, because he probably like nine, probably nine hundred, probably yeah. nine hundred, because he won five hundred and eleven, I think, and he lost like three something, yeah, like yeah, two eighty yeah. or some shit like that. Anyways, um, he came in right around the time that bullpens become, became popular, right? Roger Maris did. Mm -hmm. So there were specialists like Hoyt Wilhelm, for example, oh, who yeah. was the first closer. Like, there's all this different shit. He played against uh, black and brown players, for example. Like uh, all these records that were set before black people and, and Latinos were allowed to play baseball, they don't mean shit to me. So when Maris broke that record, I was like, I mean, I wasn't alive, obviously, but I, when, I, when I saw that in the context of history, I was like, yeah, he fucking had a better year than Babe Ruth did that year, for sure. There's no question about that. And as far as uh, Bond, Sosa, and uh, McGuire go, all the guys that have beaten that record since, um, they they played the game that was available to them at the time. You don't think so? Mickey Mantle was taking steroids, right? He had he had some chronic fucking leg condition, and he was getting shit injected into his hip that caused a huge abscess on the side of his leg. I heard it was shots of B twelve. It was it, it, it was it was amphetamines and fucking steroids, okay. my man. Uh, it wasn't why would they shoot B twelve to fix uh, an that, injured hip? That was the thing back in the day. So uh, no, I know, but that, JFK and all of them. Oh were yeah, getting yeah, all fucking shot up on yeah. B twelve all day long. But, but that, that was pumping him full of energy. To, but that doesn't that doesn't. He was getting it done not for energy. He was getting it done because he had a, an injury because he fucked his leg up because Joe Joe DiMaggio cut him off one time and he stepped in a fucking sprinkler. Right, right. He, um, he had I, I think he was also on. getting it because uh, he fucked his hand up drinking over and over and over. Maybe again. he was a drunk bitch. But uh, <laughs> at any rate, it's it's also weird. Other than Bond season. Anybody that's chased a major record like that, it seems like it's in twos. Like there's two people competing against each other. Mm -hmm. And it was also weird. Like Ruth I remember. never had it though. Who? Babe Ruth. No, nobody was even close to him. I mean, right around his time period, people really started hitting home runs. 
like in the early 20s, mid 20s is when everybody else started hitting home runs. He led the league one time with like 21, I think, or some shit. Yeah, that era is hard to describe because you had a dead ball and you mm-hmm. also had like spitballs were illegal or legal. I'm sorry. Yeah. And so we're like grease balls and all that other shit. So yeah, but there and, and there may have been four were, or five dudes throwing 95. There was the fields were massive back then. What was uh, it it depends. Field that was like 500 feet to center. Like, uh, polo grounds. Yeah. But it was 230 down the lines. Mm. Uh, it's tough to say. I, look, I, we, I wasn't Our alive. Our 215, I think, in left field. Is, yeah, I, I wasn't alive, so I, I don't really know. Um, it's hard to judge. What I, the, the only thing I was alive for was McGuire Sosa, obviously. Mm-hmm. And That was the most. I think that might be the best year of sports in my life. 1998? Like, and, well, not just 98, but 98 Major League Baseball was the best year in my personal life uh, for any year of any sport. In baseball, yeah, uh, in any sport, yeah, my, like for me, I mean, like for it's baseball, the one I that was definitely my favorite year. Um, even though my beloved Braves won in '95, uh, it was great. Mm. But no one cared then. As far as uh, exactly, um, and as far as excitement in baseball, where every single at bat was shown, and there was cutaways mm. all day and all night <laughs> long. It was McGuire Sosa, and that 1998 was the funnest year in baseball for me. Uh, in my life, mm-hmm. and that's including my favorite team winning the goddamn World Series. Yeah, it's not even close. It, it's it's it was still the most exciting event, and I, I've told this story before. I'm not sure if I told it here, but I had tickets to McGuire um, in Cincinnati the day after he broke the record, mm-hmm. and all we were doing was trying to time it up of how do we get left field to center field tickets uh, when when the chase was going on, so we could have a shot at that million dollar ball. And uh, I missed it by one day. I heard the call of him breaking the record on <clears throat> the AM radio going yeah. to the fucking game because baseball was still on like ESPN AM radio. And uh, I heard the call on the way to the game. I think it was in like the fourth or fifth inning. And I was like, it was with my, um, one of my buddies. I think it was the Drew. fourth because he got, uh, it was off Turk Wendell. It was the second at bat. I remember that. Um, no, I think it was off Steve Traxel. Uh, was it? Yeah, McGuire hit been. that home run off of. I know it was the Cubs because I know Sosa was playing right field, and he came in and did the whole bullshit afterwards. But yeah, I think it was Steve Traxel, if I remember correctly. Let's see, home um, run log. But yeah, we were pissed because it was like, oh, and we went to the game, um, and the next day, McGuire was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to play, and I'm exhausted, and I was yeah. talking to the president and all that <clears> shit. It was Steve Traxel, right? I haven't looked it up yet. Um, and he came out. He took one at bat. Flew out to left field, waved to the crowd, and then uh, that was it. And then three fourths of the stadium emptied out. Who are you talking about, Mark McGuire? Yeah. When was that? Because he hit two home runs the last day of the season. Didn't yeah. He? The, so I went to the day after. So uh, the, the <clears throat> day he broke the record was what we were trying to go to. Instead, I got the tickets for the day after, and he was exhausted. He took one at bat, waved to everybody, and fucking bounced. Um, but it was unbelievably exciting to watch and all that shit. And it was. A really funny story, and uh, and it was a fun way to be a part of it. Where you know you couldn't guess that, and the same thing happened to me in L.A. I was in L.A. when Bonds was chasing McGuire mm-hmm. for seventy, and <laughs> we'd gotten tickets. Um, and I now that I got to see him two nights in a row, and he didn't do it there. Ended up doing it in San Francisco, but uh, even when Bonds was playing, man, that was fun. I, there hasn't been that type of excitement around the game since the Cubs won the World Series. In my opinion, I don't even know if I don't think that even compares. To be honest, probably not. No. Um, so with everything that's going on right now, and especially people out of work and all that other shit, the last thing that people want to see is baseball players bickering over millions of dollars. Well, I mean, I I I hate that narrative. I hate the idea that we have to somehow just because baseball players are asking for money that they're somehow greedy. That's their job. This is they're going to work. They have, they have. The, the talent and opportunity to make a fuckload of money over the course of five to 20 years, give or take, depending on what your career is like. And that's the only time they have. It's not like they, it's not like us. Like we can have this job till we're dead. Right. I can have this job till I'm dead. They have <clears throat> maybe until they're 38 in, in most cases, if that. But you're getting 75, the last offer was mm-hmm. 75% of their salary. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that's still an awful lot of money to say. No, I'm good. I'm not going to play. 75% of their yearly salary or mm-hmm. based on the amount of games they play? pro for games, then 75% of that? Yeah. That's, fuck them. You can pay me for every single game I play. I don't give a shit if there are fans there or not. Uh, hey, man. Uh, I'm just Sorry. saying the American public is going to flip. Uh, yeah, baseball they will. players. That's because the American public is fucking stupid. 
frankly. <laughs> You're talking about, like, whose side are you going to take between a billionaire and a millionaire? I'm going to take the millionaire side because he's closer to me. I'm not going to take either. I, I take the millionaire side because they're the ones, like, that billionaire will own that team for the next 50 years. They can make all the money in the world. This guy has a fucking 5 to 15-year window probably where he's going to make his max income for his entire life. Right. So fuck these guys. Yeah, I, to, to me, personally, in this deal, I say fuck them all. Fuck the owners. Fuck the players. Fuck baseball as a sport. I, I went last year, man, and it was already starting to get boring as shit. The whole goddamn stadium is now roped off because they're worried about getting hit by a foul ball. Um, they're, they're putting bars in the outfield to go and rage at. Baseball has become an afterthought in the background now at most of these stadiums if you go. Um, I don't know how long the sport lasts, man. It, it's not exciting. <coughs> they tried to speed it up. Um, that, that speeding, isn't speeding it up is not the problem. I I I, I agree. Like, if you're pro, agree. if you're pro, that to me that's like having a shitty movie and cutting it down to fucking sixty five minutes. I, I mean, it's agree. still shit. Yeah, doesn't matter how long it is. I, I agree. Uh, that's not a. Solution. I watched that uh, King of Staten Island the other night, the mm-hmm. Jed Apatow movie. It was like two and a half hours. Um, my wife was like, "What do you what did you think of this?" And I was like, "Man, even if you took an hour out of this movie, it's still fucking boring to me." Yeah. No. No one. Uh, no one wants to go see a fucking pitcher's duel. No. Honestly. That's not what baseball is, man. I mean, I, I have friends that are pitchers in Major League Baseball, but no one wants to see that shit, bro. No. Just like no one wants to watch the fucking Patriots play football. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's boring. definitely not going to watch it's watch boring. next year. It's boring as shit, and it's um, – I don't know what uh, – I don't know what the solution is to make it more exciting. I think they took a step in the right direction putting a, li- a more live ball out there for sure. Um, yeah. That was good. Yeah, I, but you're going to have to – Rejuice it up or something. Uh, in my opinion, that league is fucked as a whole. Yeah. I think they need to cut the number of pitchers down. Instead of twelve at a max, you can only have ten. Whew. So you can't use all these fucking specialty guys. You got five, right, right. you got five starters and you got five relievers, and that's it. <laughs> like, why not? Fuck that. I mean, that's, I, they're that's, gonna have to do something. Uh, what's the, what's the alternative? Putting a fucking shot clock on the pitch? That's stupid. I, I know. No one can pay attention. It interrupts that having to look over at that shot clock and making sure you're doing stuff interrupts the flow of the game. I agree. Just as much as fucking replays should take 10 seconds. It either is or it is not, motherfucker. Like, if you don't know, if you can't, how many times have you sat at home in baseball or football and they take like three minutes to do oh, yeah. the replay and you're like, what the fuck, dude? He cl- that's clearly, clearly like yeah. you see white chalk. Yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah. I don't know. They, I think they fuck up the flow of the game with that bullshit. I think the only way that baseball can survive this is if there is a second wave and it nukes out all the other sports, and then people just forget of, of like, oh, there is no season. Maybe. Um, and I look, I hope that doesn't happen. But mm. yesterday, uh, which was breaking news in the middle of the afternoon, uh, a few Cowboys players and Houston Texan players got coronavirus, including Ezekiel Elliott. Mm. Um, Ezekiel Elliott was really pissed off about it. Why? He was really pissed off this leaked. I, I think the players know this, that if a superstar like himself comes out and has coronavirus, it's going to make other players cautious or leery about coming back. And I think everybody wants to come back and play football. And I think the players understand that everyone loves the NFL. And if you can, if you can come back now and not miss a beat, mm-hmm. and that's what the NFL <laughs> would have done if, if this season goes off without a hitch – and baseball having its problems, then you really become America's sport and you can really capitalize on baseball's bullshit. And uh, I think they understand the importance of it and they want to fucking play. Um, But if this keeps popping up at other training facilities and more and more people get sick, I don't know what's going to happen. And my biggest fear is that it's going to bleed over into college because let's face it, you're going to be worried about college students first over NFL guys. So... It sucks, man, to, <clears throat> to have read that. But I think that's baseball's only h- hope at this point is that the rest of the fucking year gets canceled for other sports. Otherwise, they're fucking screwed. Um, and I don't know why, as a fan, you'd want to come back next year. I mean, I will because I love baseball. You will. Um, but, but after the Astros bullshit and then <clears throat> lately the Yankees, um, did you read that report with the Yankees no. stealing signs as well? No, but we already knew that. We knew the Yankees. I actually didn't know that. We knew the Yankees were doing it. We knew the Red Sox were already doing it. When well, I knew the Red Sox. When, when the Houston story first came out, uh, like everybody in the league was already talking about it. The Red, well, Red Sox and Yankees are doing this too. I don't know why it took so long for the Yankees shit to come out. It was sealed in, a, in a, one of those reports from the feds. Mm. And then I guess when this case got either ended or settled, um, 
the rest of it was allowed to, this report was allowed to come out, and the Yankees were in there. Some of the things were redacted, so it didn't say specifically what they were doing in there. But uh, it isn't good for the goddamn sport, I can tell you that. I don't give a shit about this, to be honest. Uh, stealing signs? Like, look, if you're sitting in the, if you're, if you're up on the mound, mm-hmm. or you're in, the, you're in your dugout, or you're the catcher, especially, who's seeing everything on the field, and every time you call a breaking ball, somebody's doing this. Yeah. Fucking hit that guy in his fucking head. Like, fuck him. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, there's, you deal with that shit on the streets, bitch. You don't take that shit to court. Are you fucking kidding me? This is baseball. Yeah, like I, I, I agree. There's a camp, if you guys don't know about this, if you don't, if you haven't been a close follower of baseball over the years, they have kangaroo courts, right? Like yeah. after every game, if you do something stupid, like you get picked off or you you fucking miss a sign or something like that, you get fined for it. If you wear stupid looking clothes and people start making fun of you, you get fined for it. You get fined for everything by the team, and they usually put that money in a collection and buy booze or whatever the fuck, right? Or give it to charity. I mean, there's it's not like they're taking advantage of people, but. Baseball is known for doling out discipline amongst the players. And the coaches, the managers, the fucking uh, umpires turn a blind eye for the most part unless it gets dangerous. And that's been the case with baseball forever. If Jose Altuve's or Alex Bregman's up to the plate and I'm pitching and I throw gas, I'm hitting that dude right in his fucking ribs every yeah. single time. Every single time he comes up to the plate, I'm hitting him in his ribcage oh, yeah. until they take him out of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just to prove a point. And I'm, when I say me, I mean, like, if I'm the manager, I just keep sending pitchers out there to hit people. Those I, two guys especially. I wonder if baseball gets canceled this year, if people will care next year about the Astros. If this, um, or if this story will just go away. Well, Raldis Chapman's still going to care, and he still throws 103 yeah. miles per hour, so yeah. good luck. Like, if, I, if, <laughs> if I'm uh, on day one of the season – if I'm Aralis Chapman and I'm uh, playing the Astros, I'm like, hey, why don't you let me start today? Because <laughs> I'm going to hit the first four guys. And then I'll be out of there. Right in the rib cage. I'll be gone. I'll take a day off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or five days. <laughs> Whatever you get for that. Like, that's, I, I'm not even kidding. That's exactly what I would do. Same. I did that in high school, man. Like, if somebody fucking, I remember this one time. Actually, this was in, like, uh, some intramural team that I played for. <clears throat> but my brother was on the team, and some dude fucking came in a little too hot at the plate. My brother was a catcher, and I was a pitcher. Um, he came in a little too hot at the plate, and I didn't like it. So the next time he came up, I fucking broke one of his ribs. Really? Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah. I mean, th- that's how the game is played, man. It is. If you, there are consequences in life. And if you need the umpire to fucking protect you, sorry, you're a pussy. You shouldn't be playing the fucking game. Exactly. Uh what happened with that that dude out there? We're gonna get, we're gonna give Dan a fucking fastball and uh, uh, let him let him go to the rib cage or whoever that is out there. Um, I understand the audio is not hearing. I'm hearing it like it's absolutely fucking destroying me. You're putting, in a sign. putting in a sign? Is it is that is it say stop? <laughs> It'd be great if it did. Um, you're not here. But uh, we got a little ruckus going on outside the studio today. Fuck them, dude. Fuck them. Uh, we also got some sponsors to pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. So today we're doing an NBA preview show. There's so much shit going on. Um, we didn't even cock tease it at the top. There's so much shit going on. Um, the NBA preview show, we've got the dates. So we have the exact dates and we're going to run through those with you of uh, when teams are coming back, where, and all that other stuff. And we're going to go over the, the odds for, well, the winner of the championship, the NBA championship mm-hmm. this year, D'Anthony. I've got my own personal fave here. <clears throat> but we'll talk about uh, with the George Floyd situation, uh, how it could possibly uh, affect what's going on or, or the league itself yeah. um, here in a <clears throat> minute. But uh, go to mybookie.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros. It'll almost double your deposit. So if you put in 100, you'll get 50, 50% back is what, is what you're getting. It'll give you an extra 50 bones and that accounts all the way up to a thousand. So if you put in a thousand, you'll get 500 back at mybookie.com. Um, you can looking bet on uh, golf. Golf is back. I watched the PGA this weekend, by the way. Did you? It was nice. Yeah. I, it's nice to keep on the background. Some form of sport on the weekend is nice to keep on in the background. Golf is not a sport, my man. Ah, golf like is it. golf is what athletes do when they're not being athletic. <laughs> I enjoy like the PGA. what what other sport? Like if you're a golfer, what do you do in your free time? 
If it's you're a, true. if you're a baseball player, if you're a quarterback in the NFL, you if golf, you're a basketball yeah. player, what yeah, do you yeah. do? Golf. Yeah. It's a fucking recreation. It's not a sport. Get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm a PGA big fan bitches. of it. Tiger didn't play, but everybody else did, and it ended up going to a playoff. But there's crazy odds on that shit. If you're betting on golf, I mean, dude, you can get people at like 30, 50 to 1. I would watch golf if uh, fucking Adam Sandler was there. That's the only yeah. time I ever enjoyed golf in my life. I enjoy it, man. Adam Keep Sandler and Carl Weathers, they're still alive. Yeah, yeah, they're still alive. I mean, Is Bob Barker still alive? Uh, he's... Winky. Probably in jail for fucking molesting all those women, but uh, no, or did he, he just was, pay fines for that? Look, it was it was okay to be a little handsy back then. Uh, well, Bob not Barker, not really. Uh, he's um, ninety six. Holy shit! Go to yeah, he's ninety six years old. God, he's only worth seventy million. I know that's a lot of money, but for fucking fifty years of television. The problem is, you got to think of when he did it. So at the time, <clears throat> shit. Suck up on my hog, you piece of shit. I don't know what that means, but. I like it. Suck up on my hog, you filthy piece of shit. Yeah, you got to really... Uh, Who talks like that? You got to emphasize the the hog. You, know, you always have to emphasize the hog, my man. Yeah. I don't want to fucking break your spirit, but you've always got to emphasize that hog. Um, you know who loves when we talk about shit like this? Uh, probably not our sponsors. Mybookie.com does. They mm. fucking love it, dude. Well. The filthier, the better. I bet you if you could bet on people sport fucking, you could do it on my bookie if you wanted to. I don't know how you would bet on sport fucking. Ah, like what's the? How do you score points? Um, I think you score points for duration. Um, I, I are is there going to be a lot like the CrossFit? Are games. we going to get the, unbroken if you go unbroken? Yeah, are we going to get Usada involved because you could just take a bunch of Viagra and never come? Or some you can get Roman from getroman.com dot com for yeah. You can get you can you get could. you can get the Viagra from them. You could, but I think you need to get tested. Wait, what's it called? Viagra? Um, what's the brand? Not the brand name for Viagra, but you can get. So the, the analogs to, uh, the, the, to Viagra and uh, Cialis, you can get on GetRoman.com. Yeah. Yeah, you can get them. Like you, they sell more now than the goddamn doctors do. GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Yeah. will get you that fucking boner. Here's what you need, though, in this Do you think life. they would sponsor it? I think they would. And, and so you, but you get tested. So you can either do it with or without the Roman. Right? So Denafil, yeah. So you can fuck with the Roman or without <laughs> the Roman and then see. Well, that's two different classes, though. Like you're I in agree. the drug class and the non drug class. I agree. Obviously, non drug <laughs> class is the best, but then you can grade it on duration, mm-hmm. uh, unbroken mish, uh, unbroken fucking doggy, reverse cowgirl, reverse what, cowboy. Um, what about. Unbroken eye contact with a stranger. Yeah, I think that's, that's while you're banging. One. Like there's somebody in the window making eye contact with you the whole time, and you got to stay fucking, but you got to maintain eye contact with them the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the most uncomfortable sex scene last night that I've seen in uh, quite a while. Was it uh, nothing to do with sports? Well, fucking kind of is. It's sport fucking. What's the? What's it was the... in Rocket Man, mm-hmm. um, the Elton John movie. This guy had really hairy legs, and Elton John flips this guy over was it Joe Biden? in the bed. No, he was not. Because Joe, Joe Biden. Biden is known for having hairy legs as well. He is. He definitely is. He flips this guy over in the bed, and they go, they go mish. Oof. And There's two when dudes? He, he lifts his legs up like a woman, like mm-hmm. back, you know? And you can just see how hairy his legs are. And the, the way it's shot, like the silhouette of the two of them, is, is Elton John is boning this dude mish, mm-hmm. is something to be seen. And... uh yeah, I mean, you know I love gay sex scenes a lot like, for sure, in, yeah. in movies. I mean, who um, doesn't? This one really got me. I was like, oh, boy, I'm going to think about that for a few days. Um, you know, man, i got to be honest. Uh, I'm into it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros. We're not and even live, scheduled to do an ad for not, them right now. We're not, but they Sometimes always keep popping happens, up in yeah. here, pun intended. Uh, we're actually Nailed doing it. MyBookie.com today. Promo Wait, did we talk about GhostBed yet? What's that? Did we talk about Ghostbed? No, here? we will though. Okay, we definitely will. But my bookie is where we're gonna. I mean, this is a sports you, we're gonna show. We're going to give you all so the, the NBA bets. Yeah, we're going to give them all the NBA bets, of course. But I want to let people know the reason I'm talking about my bookie and sport fucking mm-hmm. is um, afterwards we're going to go through the odds. This the, the reason why it's called the NBA draft or the uh, playoff preview for uh, it's for a reason. Obviously, we're going to go through the odds with you afterwards, and the the freshies are out. So stick around after the sponsors because that's that's what we're gonna go with here for this. But go to mybookie.com uh, promo code Drinking Bros. We'll uh, get you about half that deposit back, my man. Put in a hundred, 
You wake up with 150 in the accounts. Um, KillCliffCBD.com is our title sponsor for every single show. You hear First, them at the top. You hear them in the song. <laughs> and uh, they're the fucking best on the goddamn world. I even shouted them out on RPR this morning. Sports. Um, what's up? Sports. So, yeah. Uh, but I shouted them out on RPR this morning as well. No, I know, but they they're uh, they do sports. Yeah, they do. Kill Kill what did I say? No, they. I'm saying that. Oh, they do sports. Yeah, yeah, they fucking do sports. <laughs> we had some tech issues here today, and I'm, I'm I feel like I'm on acid. Well, I'm also being weird. I'm sure that doesn't uh, help because I think it's it's, funny. it's more of a mental thing here. I'm in the middle. I was in the middle of a perfect game. I f- I feel like and. Uh, a little kid just threw a fucking Cracker Jack. On the or two girls fucking pulled their titties out behind the thing. That wouldn't bother me, man. Tech issues bother me forever. I would hit her right in the rib hitch, too. Don't interrupt me when I'm doing shit. <laughs> I don't care how nice your goddamn titties are. There's only one set of titties that can distract me like that, and they don't belong to you, my man. Really? Yep. Who are they? Dolly Parton? Yes. No. Okay. All right. Of course not. Uh, KillCliffCBD.com. 25 milligrams. Every single can. Three amazing flavors, mango, grape, and uh, the old orange, Mm -hmm. orange, orange, orange. Love KillCliffCBD.com. You will not piss hot, and there's no THC in any of these cans. And if there's a zombie apocalypse, all you need is some viper semen, and you can... Goddamn right. Viper semen, KillCliff, and... We've been using uh, KillCliff since range 15, man. Lead Slingers whiskey cures gigantic zombies. Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off and uh, free delivery, which is a big deal when you're shipping cans. It is. Um, I just ordered three cases. I, uh, dude, I, I keep ordering my. So does my dad. My dad keeps ordering them. I'm trying we to get him it. to do like a subscription thing where he just automatically sends shit to me. Please. That would be amazing. Because I keep. I always forget until I'm down to like four cans. I'm like, fuck. I was at a neighborhood party Saturday night. And everybody was doing uh, Kill Cliff CBD and vodka. That is the summertime drink this year. I'm calling it. Last year, we were all about White Claws and Trulies. Yeah. Uh, vodka and Kill Cliff CBD. I'm always about both of those things. I mean, I, I'll drink. I double fist, and it's Kill Cliff and vodka and then a White Claw. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah, in yeah. case. Keep you, uh, you never know. On the up and up. You never know. Yeah. Last but not least, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 25% off everything in the entire store. Uh, you get two free pillows with a mattress right now as well. And as always, you can use their um, 36-month pay-as-you-go program mm-hmm. with this deal. Can't believe they're still doing that. Can't believe they're still offering 25% off there, but they are. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get everything 25% off in there. That's uh, an adjustable basis as well. Yeah, those I would are, be uh, curious if we could plug in our mics into that. And just fucking do a show from bed? Do a show from bed. I don't see why not. I think it would work just the same. Yeah, well, maybe better. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll give it a go. <clears throat> Me and you will just get in a fucking ghost mm-hmm. bed. And jack it up, dude. Uh, let's get to the NBA odds here, D'Anthony. So I'm going to start you off with some key dates here, kids. Okay. Is I'm betting on this now. Um, that's just me personally because I like these odds and more... Importantly, the team that I like to win it all is... Uh, that you like? Yes. That you want or that you think will win it's it all? It's not that I want. I, w- I want the Hawks to win. Um, well, that's, that's not, never going to happen. Not going to happen. Although in NBA 2K, I think they may have overrated Trey Young's capabilities a little bit. No, they definitely did not. Like, he personally is good, but he the, how much better he makes everyone on his team in the game is uh-huh. irrational. It's nonsense. <laughs> They need to get their shit together. Uh, no, the, the the team I think is is going to win it all is currently in third, and that's that's where my money is going. Is that the Clippers now? Before they come back, <laughs> and you see actually how healthier or fresh players are. Um, I will say this because Hollywood shut down. Space Jam Two has obviously been put on hold, shooting wise. Oh no! And uh, well, look, that affects LeBron. LeBron's it's going to be lead. the fucking biggest disappointment of all time. Yeah, everything LeBron does is the biggest like, disappointment. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Is I mean, Bill Murray in it? No. Then, well, I don't know, actually. We don't know. But I would have said this. If he was shooting that fucking movie, forget mm. it. I would have said forget it. Uh, you can forget the Lakers. But since he's not, he is rested, and he hasn't had to do any of that bullshit. So we'll get to that in a second because that, that is cooked into these odds. Wait, um, what else are we doing? Did we finish the ads? Yeah, we finished all the ads. Shit. Um, off our game today. A lot of tech issues. Uh, June 15th, 
players traveling outside the U.S. can return to team markets. So that was yesterday. Um, anybody who's, uh, how about those honks from uh, Eastern Europe? Donka, Luca, they're, uh, Shota. Like it, it used to be where we had some very outstanding European players in the league, like Vlade, the honks, the Vlade, Vlade Divac, uh, Peja Stojakovic. Like they were really good players. They, yeah. were, they were like uh, probably, I don't know. I wouldn't say they were among the best, but they were that second tier for sure. Like Pitten, I've never seen – to me, Clay Thompson is Peja Stojakovic that can play defense. Like he's got that smooth of a stroke. Yeah, Peja did. He's the best shooter, one of the best shooters I've ever seen. I think he's one of the top ten of all time. Oh yeah. Um. So, but now it's like there are people that could be, and and Dirk obviously was in that, but he mm-hmm. was the top tier. He's mm-hmm. one of the few European top tiers. Now we have two or three European guys like uh, Jokic and those guys, and 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 Luca. Luca. Like they are like legit. We we have several and Giannis as well. Yeah. Uh, we have like three right there top fucking 10 players i think oh, maybe t- at least top 20 easily if not top 10 that are from europe so it's this this nba shit doesn't just affect the united states like, no the nba is huge in china even though they have problems and blah 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 it's huge in europe now it's mm-hmm. like it's becoming more like soccer and that's why uh baseball might go away yeah, at least in its it, current form because no one other than here in latin Asia. america gives a shit well Asia, it's only latin it's only america, it's yeah. only japan and and, and the koreas uh, well, yeah, not yeah, South Korea, yeah, North, North Korea, <laughs> North Korea. They don't like not you, North. They get hit with a lot of baseball. Yeah, bats you just you basically it's like that uh, scene from Happy Gilmore where he's standing in the batting cage getting hit in the chest. Yeah, you get like to do that. That's like your out. That's your rec time because you're in prison <laughs> in North Korea. So you get to go stand in front of a pitching machine and get hit in the chest a bunch of times to remind you how fun it is to not get hit in the chest with a baseball. Yep. So if you feel like complaining about the fact that you're starving to death and can't get medicine or say what you want. Mm-hmm. At least you're doing those things without getting hit in the chest with a baseball. Correct. You know what I mean? So Correct. Uh, June 22nd, all other players can return to team markets. So it looks like that's a seven-day quarantine there for European players. Uh, it appears uh, June 23rd, head coaches can begin working with players in voluntary workouts. Oh, so I was but head co- how much? So they are staying by the two weeks at least. Uh, of like how many? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. They are. How many uh, head coaches, though, these days – are a huge part of the day-to-day practice. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know that that's a thing now in the NBA. There's a couple of guys that play at old school, like Phil Jackson did back in the day. Yeah. But even the old, a lot of the old school guys didn't. They let, they let their coaches or their, their assistant coaches do a lot of the shit day-to-day. Yeah, Steve Kerr does, but... Uh, does what? Get involved in yeah, the stuff? Yeah, involved. Steve Kerr does. Uh, I think Pop does a little bit as well. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think a lot of those guys do. Like, I, I couldn't see... Uh, like Rudy doing that, to be honest. No. Like, I, I just, I don't know. No. It just didn't make sense to me. And even Phil, later in his career, I don't think he really did it. Like, he had established that style so well, I don't think he really did that. I don't uh, know I don't know why they added that as part of the thing. But I guess because of the coach, the assistant coaches too, but Yeah, I don't know. one would imagine. Um, July 7th, and this is a big date. Teams begin arriving in Florida. So you're going to do all this in Orlando. Uh, essentially in a bubble yeah. is what they're calling it. Well, we'll see if it happens. Um, July 7th is a little less than three weeks away. Um, you and I were talking before we went on air about the George Floyd thing and the Black Lives Matter movement mm-hmm. that's currently going on. You said you don't believe NBA will be playing this year? Here's why I think that it might not. I don't know. I'm, I can't say for sure that it's not going to happen, but <clears throat> um, first of all, there is the players are already this coalition of people. And it's like, I think it's, uh, I don't even know, like 20 or 30, maybe 40 NBA guys. And then there's, there's like 90 or a hundred people in total, including like former Olympians and shit like that, that are talking about all the sports, not just basketball, but like, how can we use this opportunity with all the shit going on to make our league or organization, whatever it happens to be like truly commit to social justice. And I think that's not the worst thing I've ever heard. That's a good idea to make these billionaires actually take care of the fucking people that they've been parading around as entertainment for the rest of us for the last 50 years. That's not the worst thing I've ever heard. So there's some, um, there's some level of responsibility that the billionaire owners have to the community for sure. And I'm fine with them having that conversation. I don't think that's the thing that would stop it though. I think it's, uh, LeBron James, all the pressure that's on him. 
Like he definitely want in his brain. I don't give a fuck what he says publicly. He wants to play because they have the best chance to win the championship, in his opinion, for sure. I don't know. We'll see what happens there. They are currently the favorites. I they are the favorite that. for sure. Um, but he also wants to have a career after basketball. He wants to be a billionaire. Like he wants to be the Jordan. Yes. He wants to be the brand aware guy. But he's already involved himself in social justice. So. Because he has something to gain from playing the rest of the season and the fact that he's older and this might be his last chance to win a title, people, I believe, will use that against him. Like when he, If he comes out and says, I think we should play without giving some kind of thoughtful uh, address to all these issues that are going on and how that folds into everything, immediately people are going to be like, you're doing this because you want to win and you're not fucking – they're, they're just going to call out his street cred on it. And he's a coward. We've seen that before. So, With the China issue. Yeah. And – I think his, I think his cowardice will continue, and I think he plays. I think his brand means more to him than uh, than his than championships at this point. I think the championships adds to the brand. It does in a way, but he doesn't have anything. Like even if he wins this year, right? Mm-hmm. He's still what four and six in finals. Yes. Sorry, bro. Maybe four and seven. No, four and six. Four and right. six. Yeah. Right. So it's um, it's like still you're never going to be comparable to Jordan. Sorry. I believe so, but I've heard interviews where he considers himself among the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time, including on his show, what's the bar, uh, the shop, um, mm. I watched that, and he said after he beat the Warriors, he felt like he could finally be in the conversation of greatest of all time. To me, I think that's a fucking joke, but um, it's Jordan 1, Kobe 2, and you want to throw LeBron anywhere else down that list, I'm fine with wherever you put that asshole, but uh, I think... I think it means too much to him, and I think he's going to come back. And uh, maybe he's what thirty six years old. Yeah, yeah, and it's. I mean, I I think he would be right to come back. I don't think there's any purpose in not like no. If you if you're in a position of power and you're trying to use that power to influence of uh, like positive change, you can't let your fucking power decrease because your ability to produce change decreases as well yes you know what i mean you can do both at the same time it's not either or like kyrie irving needs to shut the fuck up he he's he's the he's actually the uh the reverse the inverse rather of lebron because he's definitely not going to be playing so he's trying like he's he he is the embodiment of both sides of every fucking political issue ever it benefits him to be able to take a stand now because he loses nothing by taking that nothing, stand. Yeah, he's so he out. does it openly and tries to get fucking clout for it. Yeah. That is the embodiment of fucking political cowardice. You are a piece of shit, Kyrie Irving. Fuck you. So there was um, three players on that conference call on Friday nights mm. that spoke out. One was Kyrie Irving. The other one was Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard is really same as saying, look, I, I'm still not sure I want to come back and play. I've got too much on my mind. Um, he is a backup center currently for the Lakers. He's had a decent year so yeah. far. I mean, he's still very talented. Uh, he's he's probably the most um, underwhelming superstar of all time. Like he should have absolutely been the best center of his generation. Lazy. And he's not. He's, he has a zero work ethic. He's yeah. he's out of Atlanta, and um, he has zero work ethic. All he really wanted to do, to be honest, was be famous. Yeah. What fucked him was <laughs> um, because. He's lazy and made too many fucking demands. Mm. That decreases your fame. All mm-hmm. you have to do is play hard and be, and be great. You can be famous as shit. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I mean, he's, I think because of that, he's he lining up, up behind back. JaVale McGee right now. Yeah, I think I think because of that, he comes back. I think LeBron comes back because of his age, and uh, and I think the Lakers make a run at it. Um, Let's hope so. I honestly think uh, it would be really hard to beat them. Well, I we'll, think maybe the Clippers could do it if they all played together. Yeah, maybe. yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it here. Uh, July 9th through the 29th, training camp in Florida uh, begins with three scrimmages per team. It's not a lot. Um, I mean, they've been off for a while now, close to four months at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, three scrimmages. <laughs> July 30th will be a, a, a really, really fun day. Seating games begin, eight per team. Um, so you're going to find out who's playing who and why. Uh, Are they going to, I mean, God damn it. They haven't made the schedule for the last 22 games or 24. They're going to out that. So they're going to play like eight. Um, They're going to play every other day, eight games per team. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, And that'll lead into August 17th when the playoffs actually begin. 
So the playoffs themselves will begin August 17th. And is the play the playoffs are going to be traditional or traditional playoffs. So seven game series all the way through. Four, Correct. Four. Uh, I think the first one is five. I believe. You got to go fo 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 and fo is uh, Mo. Uh, what's his name? Not Mo. Uh, Mo Bamba. Rebounding from the 1970s. Moses Malone. Moses Malone. Yep. Uh, next up. August. Moses Malone averaged like 19 rebounds a game <laughs> because yeah. he, like there's, there's actual video on YouTube. If you want to go look and laugh, if you get like baked or a drunk leader and you want to just see some ridiculous shit, uh, there are fucking times where he's on a fast break and he sucks so bad at finishing that he keeps like, he gets like four rebounds on one possession because he's the only tall guy around and he's like throwing the ball up off he's the like fucking seven foot eight. Uh, yeah. He played for the Hawks for a very long time. Um, God, look at those he jerseys. He played for the 76ers, everyone. Yeah. He might be a Hall of Famer, to be honest with you. Uh, he is, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, August 30th. This one's an interesting one. Family and guests of teams may arrive. So why? There are let, they why? are letting people why? there. Why? If there's any risk at all, why? I don't know. Dude, it's fucking two months. You can't go without seeing your family for two months. Why don't you join the fucking military, asshole? Strange. Uh, September 30th. That's the Target NBA Finals date. So on or about September 30th is when the finals are going to be played. Here's where this So when's the crazy. next season start? Cause so the, the like next season. November, December? Uh, so there'll be 14 teams eliminated within 53 days of arriving. Um, and only four teams will remain after 67 days. Hmm. The six teams eliminated after eight regular season games and a possible play-in tournament for the number eighth seed would leave the bubble, which is where they're going to play, uh, within 35 to 40 days. The NBA expends, expects the conference finals will end within a maximum of 82 days. Um, wow. When would they restart the season? Probably Christmas um, for the new season mm. or just afterwards in January for the new season. If it happens, and we'll see. Um, look, again, we're three weeks out. You're certainly not going to fly everybody down there and then just cancel it. Um, no. I think they're going to go at that point. Yeah, they'll make a decision for sure if they're going to cancel it within the week. Yeah. By the end of this one, week, one I would imagine. think. Um, but in the meantime, there is odds up, uh, like I was saying, on mybookie.com. Mm -hmm. And right now, they've got the Lakers at plus 185. So that's about... That's you know, one and a half. I mean, that's that's pretty good. I mean, that's that's a that's lot a, of confidence. A lot of confidence. And they have the the weird thing to me is the Bucks at plus two seventy five is in second place, and they haven't shown any ability to win do or die games in the playoffs. Right. Like that's weird. That's like to me. That's like if we were starting the Major League Baseball uh, postseason today, and all the teams that you expect to be are in it, and the Dodgers are the second most likely to win it. No, they're not because they can't fucking win the World Series. Yeah. Like that, that this group of dudes have shown not only do they struggle in the playoffs, but definitely when it gets to the World Series, they're not going to fucking win. That well, to me is what this is because the Bucks, they, they haven't shown any ability to like fucking dominate in the postseason like that. And spurts, yeah, up to game five, they're pretty good. And then yeah. after game five, they fucking suck. If you're a Bucks fan, I, I would say here, if you're going to bet on them, I think here's the time to do it. And uh, this is why I believe it. You're going to be playing in this bubble. There's no fans. And, I mean, at one point, there will be friends and family and shit. Mm. Who cares? It's a glorified scrimmage at that point. Um, You're saying that because there's less pressure, that's yes. not going to affect them? Maybe. That's the best environment you could possibly be in if you're a team like the Milwaukee Bucks. Because you Maybe. don't want to play in <clears throat> L.A. at Staples Center um, for either of these teams. If you were going against the Lakers or the Clippers in the final in the finals, that would be a fucking mess. And vice versa. Like, Milwaukee's loud as shit, You don't too. think that's more pressure, though? Like, personally, as you and I have spoken in front of very, very large groups of people, mm -hmm. like thousands of people. Yes. I would rather speak in front of 5,000 people than 10 people all day long. There's no pressure in front of 10. 5,000, there is. I think there's no pressure in front of 5,000. Yeah, so I, I, I look at it the opposite way, where it's just like, eh, if I disappoint 10 people here tonight, who gives a fuck? Um, but... Not that I ever have. Come on, brother. I, I'm, I don't know why I'm the exact opposite. I remember uh, I was the uh, student body president one time, one of the times, the fucking gajillion times I went to college. Um, I was the student body president and the president of the National Honor Society there. What college? Uh, it was a computer college. Okay. Uh, but <clears throat> I, had to, I had to like do all the graduation ceremonies. I spoke at all of them. It was just like fucking tons of people. I'm just like, all right, cool. I'll read this. But then in, in classrooms, having to talk to like 12 or 15 people, 
I don't know. It just felt weird to me to okay. be standing in front of a small group of people talking. That's a weird thing to do. It might, it makes much more sense to talk in front of a lot of people than a small group of people. It may be. I, for playing sports, though, to me, this will probably feel like AAU to these guys or summer league. Maybe. Akin I, to summer league, and it's like we've never seen, at least I haven't, I have never <clears> seen a meaningful NBA game in front of a tiny audience that is would yeah. feel like a, a scrimmage or a – a summer league game and do they know what arena they're going to be playing what arenas like i would just play them in yeah, high school it's the wide world of sports arena in uh i think it's disney world why not just play them in like high school gyms or some shit great like you don't Wouldn't need it? any of the fucking shit that you, that you have in an nba stadium it's an excellent question so they 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 asked that and they said well we think kids will be in school then in florida so oh yeah maybe probably in florida that's true yeah yeah they'll be in use yeah. so they're they're going there uh and well next up place is, that can accommodate them and isolate them in hotel wise um, oh, yeah, a Disney city. resort would yeah, make yeah. a lot of sense. Disney would make a shit ton of money off that. It'd be great. I mean, between that and ESPN airing everything, they're going to fucking make quite a bit of money. Well, Disney owns ABC and ESPN. Yeah, so. they're going to uh, make all the money. That was a pretty much a no-brainer. So next up is the Clippers. Yes. And, and so Clippers and, and Lakers, to me, are at least institutionally, they're onesie twosie. I think it's weird that they're this far apart. Same. Odds this is, by the way, so this is who I'm picking. I'm picking the, the, the Los Angeles Clippers, and it's a plus 300. So this is three to one. And it's three to one odds. Yeah, that's the best odds you can get for a, a favorite now at this point. Yeah, and uh, I think with a healthy Kawhi Leonard, because he's finally healthy, mm. and I think that motherfucker's been doing nothing but playing basketball because he doesn't have a life. LeBron's got kids and a wife and all that other shit. I don't know what Kawhi Leonard has. Um, he's like Clay Thompson, probably. Like yeah. Clay Thompson. I remember. Um, I think it was after, uh, or it was it was during the finals the last one that they won. So what was it, two years ago? Mm -hmm. um, they were asking, like, what, what do you do with your time off and blah, blah, blah? How do you relax before the game? He goes, I don't know. I'll just hang out at the house with my docs. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, no fucking trips. You don't, you're not going out to the lake or anything? No, I just kind of hang out at the house with my docs. If <laughs> like, I'm right, an cool, NBA dude. coach, <clears throat> that is exactly what I want, is a guy who does not have a life yeah. and is just <clears throat> at home waiting for the fucking basketball season. Well, I need, you need a good mix. Like, you need... Scotty Pippen and Jordan that only want to win, and then you need yeah. you need a Dennis Rodman yeah, yeah, yeah. as well, I, probably. Patrick Beverly to me is their Rodman esque type guy. I like Patrick Beverly, I, and I like Draymond He's fun Green to watch. too. He's weird. Yeah, like, I like I like both of those guys. I know a lot of people are fans of either one or the other mm -hmm. because they have you know they're they're not fans of each. Actually, I bet they are fans of each other in some way, probably because you, game respects game. Like yeah, yeah, Dr yeah. Draymond's not a hater, really. He's just like a fucking. He doesn't have the physical talent. To be able to take time away from grinding it out to hate on people, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's one. Of, I think Beverly's the same way. He like you can tell, even though he's on a different team than LeBron, he respects LeBron quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, I think the the Clippers they've got to be institutionally speaking, they have they should be the favorite. I this think. is where all of my American dollars are going because defense, like to win the championship. Yes, and it, and if if it's going to be a rec league type game, um, yeah. I like the Clippers in that format, and there's going to uh, be there's going to be less momentum for offensive play. I think like there's not going to be a big dunk and then a roar of the crowd that gets everybody on that team energized. It's going to be a big dunk, and all the players are going to be like, "All right, cool." Right, right, right. You know what I mean? You're, you're right. So I think you don't, you're not worried about that. It. Definitely benefits the Clippers. Uh, it also benefits the Celtics, though, who are at fucking yeah. plus twelve hundred. So because the they Celtics, they play that style of game. Yeah, the, and the Celtics to me, if you're going to bet on a sleeper in the East. It's the Celtics. Um, I think the Celtics are the sleeper team to bet on to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. And <clears throat> you don't know. You don't know in this format. And you might as well take a swing at a, a, a bigger odds here because why the fuck not? You're at plus 1,200 for this. Yeah. You put down 100 bucks, <laughs> you win $1,200 on the Celtics. Um, the Toronto Raptors are after that. Who I'm not – I don't really give a fuck about them. I don't think they're going to do anything. Now, my sleeper money – is going on this next team, the Houston Rockets at plus fifteen hundred. Mm. You put down a hundred, you win fifteen hundred. Here's the deal: you have Harden, you mm -hmm. have Westbrook, in a rec league pickup game, and they're fucking flying around shooting lights out. If they hit a hot streak at this place, but they've got to get there first. They do. They have to hit a hot streak like four series in a row. Correct. Not necessarily their their first round opponent. They'll probably smoke, but second round on, they're going to need to be hot that whole time. Yeah, um, which is so difficult. I, who knows? If there's two guys, though, that can get hot, Westbrook and Harden, um, man, 
I'm not going to count them out on that. That's where I'm putting my sleeper money. At. Yeah, I mean, part I'm of me. Throw, I'm going to throw 200 on uh, on the Houston Rockets as my sleeper. It's not team a bad. Man. It's not a bad bet. I think uh, at plus 1500. That'll pay me three grand if that comes. Yeah. to fruition. Part of uh, part of me wants to to give a look at uh, to Dallas just because Porzingis and and Luca are so goddamn good. But I think they need. A third piece. They do to and, win games. and just a couple more years' experience. Um, they need like a fucking. They need somebody like they need a good two way player like Clay Thompson or somebody like. Not that they would get him, but somebody like that. Somebody that can shoot threes and play defense. A wing guy like fucking Trevor Ariza or some shit like that. Yeah, they're not getting it from Tim Hardaway Jr. No, um, or or fucking Seth Curry, who you know he's a good shooter, but he can't create his own shots and shit like that. The last one that I would throw, I'm going to throw just a hundred dollars on, uh, just to do it, is uh, is a sleeper mm-hmm. team that some bookies have been talking about, and it's the Denver Nuggets. Um, they're the always Nuggets tough, man. We're pretty goddamn close last year mm-hmm. um, to get into the the Western Conference Finals. And uh, they got another European on that team, mm. the Joker, who's pretty goddamn good. So he's good too. Yeah, we'll he's... see what kind of shape he's in. Is the only thing he's been quarantined like the rest of us, mm. and he came into this this season overweight. He's a bit of a chonk. Yeah, he looks like Chungus. Yeah, the fucking uh, you know what Chungus is? Yeah, it's Bucks Bunny, but with <laughs> a, a, with diabetes. I guess I don't fucking know. Chonk. Yeah, I just like the name Chonk. Um, yeah, man, there he is up there. So I don't know what kind of shape he's going to come in at, but uh, I the Denver Nuggets is the last one. I'm going to throw a hondo on that just in case. Um, <laughs> but it'll be fun as shit. Big Chungus, look at that. Big Chungus, dude, there he is. Oh, um, there's a mega Chungus shit. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, look, the 70s, nobody's got more talent on their team than the 76ers do, but they can't figure it out. They can't figure it out. Like they, what, What's their fucking record? I can't entertain it. I can't entertain it. They're the sixth 76ers. in the guy. They have... They have their entire team is all stars, and they still yeah, they can't figure it out. Are sixth place in that fucking league. They're not going to figure it out during this playoffs either. They've got Ben Simmons, Glenn Robinson the third, who's actually pretty good, and Tobias Harris and Joel Embiid. Tobias Harris is great. Al Joel Horford, Embiid. yeah, Al Horford. I mean, it's it's a that team's amazing, but uh, they can't figure it out. So I, I'm that's where I I stop right there is after the Denver Nuggets. So to recap. Most of my American dollars are going on the Clippers. My two sleepers in this are uh, the Houston Rockets and the Denver Nuggets. I like the Clippers winning, like not just because I think they have a good shot at it, but I think that would be good because when's the last time a player has won a championship, switched teams, and won a championship with his new team? Never. It's ne- Well, Robert Ori probably did it at some point well. in his career. But like a, I'm talking about a like superstar. a fucking superstar. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's ever happened before. Maybe with Wilt back in the day, did he win one when he first moved over? I don't know. From Philadelphia? Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, know, I don't know. Maybe. Um, but the, he would be the only guy that I could think of that would have done something like that because back then free agency wasn't really like it is now. Yeah. You, you would remember. I guess uh, Charles Barkley came close in 93, but fucking Jordan lit his ass on fire. Um, no, but, but to win championships in two seasons, like Barkley never won a championship. Oh, no, he never won. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, like, an, even a guy going to a new team like that. I guess uh, LeBron and those guys going down to Miami, that happened. But even superstars going to a new team and immediately winning with that new team. Yeah, but even LeBron, it's kind of rare. they lost the first year in Miami and they came back and won the second year. Uh, well, I, I guess Kawhi do, doing it last year was the the only time Sweet I really remember. Sweet Baby Ray won that. It wasn't necessarily LeBron. Yeah. But so. um, <clears throat> at any rate, yeah, that backup shot after everybody had left the arena. Whew. Yeah, um, yeah, I think uh, you really have to start talking about Kawhi Leonard being the best player in the NBA. If he fucking wins back to back championships yes. on two separate teams, yes. Like you, and I don't think at this point because after this season, LeBron's thirty seven. He's definitely on the downslope of his career. Although he still will be an all star, like for sure. He's he's a very talented guy, but um, Kawhi Leonard, who's in his twenties, still wins back to back championships on different teams. That to me is the best player in the NBA. Same. Um, and he's definitely already the best two way player in the NBA. It's him and Clay Thompson, mm-hmm. onesie twosie in that in that regard. Um, Because you got to think about this, and here's why. Again, I think LeBron will play this year. Next year, the the Warriors are back, dude, and they're reloading. (laughs) Who knows what the Warriors are going to look like next year? I mean, they're definitely going to have Steph Curry, whomever whomever they get for Andrew Wiggins or Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, yeah, right. Draymond Green, Draymond Green, Clay, and Steph. It's, I mean, like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then whomever else they sign, because they still have cap room if they want to go sign somebody. Yeah, dude. So it's like... And they're going to have a high draft pick because they lost every game. They might have the number one pick in the draft. They likely will have the number one pick in the draft, although I don't know. 
I, the, the, Ooh, number one, the, the number year. one pick in this draft is going to be like a two year from it's a bad starting year from draft, kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. They'll probably but trade that number one pick, to be honest. I, I think LeBron will definitely play because this, this is it. And look, again, Clay and Steph coming back, then you have to contend with those guys again. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck that, man. I mean, they're going to be like rested too for the first time in six years, basically. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So full, that's, they've had a full year off essentially. I can't. I think. I think next season, if it plays normally, I think we're going to see a fucking Golden State Brooklyn Nets matchup in the finals, and that's going to be fucking great. Can you imagine that? DeAndre Jordan, fucking KD, and Kyrie versus the fucking Warriors. That that would be one of the best series of all time, probably. Be great. Um, um, very if, salivating if happens, for that. I don't know what's going to happen with that Nets team. I think they're going to be good. I, I, to me, it's a coin toss. Like, but and also, the East is weak as fuck. Like you've seen, Philly can't fucking win. It's only the Celtics. Yeah, yeah, yeah for the sure. Celtics and maybe the Raptors coming yeah, out of there. I think and, the Celtics will be good for a while. But um, Kyrie is one of those guys, man, who can just absolutely poison a team. Yeah, and he's he's a terrible. I, I have human no being. idea what to to think about <clears throat> that guy. Um, he's fun to watch when he's on a shitty team because he can go for fifty. Yeah. and then talk about flat Earth after. He's definitely got the best handles in the game a lot of people say it's either him or stuff it's definitely Kyrie yeah, yeah, yeah. like there's no question about that um I, I look the guy is talented he's just a fucking piece of shit he doesn't seem like a very smart person no like when I say smart <laughs> he may know a lot of stuff like he may be an actual smart human being but the stuff that he allows himself to believe yeah is super problematic uh and then we got breaking news here the Raiders new stadium uh will host the 2021. Good, because no one Pro wants Bowl. to go to fucking Hawaii for that shit. Actually, I don't even know why the NFL has the Pro Bowl. It's stupid. So, I was, do you even watch it? I've never I've watched it like 3 times no, in, in the entire I, I, stopped, I stopped watching it. Um unless the only times we've watched it I think is when we threw money on it and we would we would always throw money on the over and then just watch it and be like, "All right, sweet, yeah. great." <clears throat> I will say this, having been in Hawaii during a Pro Bowl, mm -hmm. um I saw the players out at the restaurants and all that shit. The reason why the players loved it was they all got a free vacation for their family right after the season was over. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's Hawaii. But, but they didn't you, really give a shit about the game. They but just the wanted way, a free vacation. The way they have it set up, the two players from the, like 104 players from the very best two teams mm -hmm. that exist aren't even eligible to play. No. It's fucking They're stupid, dude. It's, like how many, how many people from the Kansas City Chiefs last year should have been on the Pro Bowl? Oh, like dude. Like their entire goddamn offense. 300. The, the problem with the Pro Bowl is – Everybody's worried about getting hurt. I wouldn't play in the goddamn Pro Bowl. And nobody wants to play, so everybody keeps backing out of it. Yeah. Uh, I think they should just have, like, uh, some kind of weird event. It's a strange one. They used to. They used to have those, like, uh, like throwing instead, competitions. Yeah, yeah. That, those were fun. I love those. Playing, like, the beach volleyball football yeah. stuff. That was cool as shit. Invite them all there and do something like that. Dion always used to play is, in those. Oh, yeah. Because uh, he would play. If you walk, if you saw Dion Sanders on the street right now and you, you challenged him to anything, I guarantee you he would be like, fuck you. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going to give you. Like, a, if you challenged Dion Sanders to a foot race right now and he was in a fucking suit and dress shoes, yeah. he would fucking try to race you, I think. I am grimacing because he was on a game show the other night, My uh, my kid likes to watch these game shows. I forget what network is doing it. They're doing game shows every night, like celebrity game shows. Mm -hmm. So there was one called Guess Who, and Deion Sanders was on the panel. And three people come out, and they're like, I'm an astronaut. I'm an astronaut. I'm an astronaut. Oh, yeah, you I know that show, yeah. questions to yeah, try yeah. to figure out who the astronaut is, or any profession in life, right? Deion Sanders came out on this show, and the woman, the three people that came out said, I'm the the podiatrist or foot doctor for yeah. Oprah and Deion Sanders goes oh, okay cool I've got a foot condition I want you guys to diagnose it and he took off his sock um, put hey, type in he Alex, showed him the type in Deion Sanders on guess who <clears throat> or Deion Sanders feet on guess who I mean he what he's got turf till and plantar fasciitis right he did not have any toenails it was the grossest pair of feet I've ever seen in my entire life People were vomiting in the stands. Like, yeah, he's missing. Like, oh, oh, god, why? Yeah, I, there's uh, now he's missing toenails and shit. Like, there's another one right there. Yeah, oh my god, just I can't. Well, I can't put it up for the crowd so they have to see it on YouTube. I don't want to see it anymore though, so I'm gonna block this out of my. So Deion Sanders put his bare foot up there, and he goes, "All right, if you work on Oprah's feet, what's wrong with mine?" And two women, you could tell they were visibly disgusting. He mm. goes, oh, you don't even have to work with feet. You don't mm. know what the fuck you're talking about. Um, but, yeah, 
I couldn't even look. I would if I was married to him. I would make him wear socks. Um, like a condom over his. Oh foot. my god! God damn it, dude! <laughs> Get you can pull it off. Put it up on the screen so everybody else. Has I to think look at I would be. I, I would be really good at that show though. I should be a permanent panel member on Guess Who because I would fucking light those guys up all the time. I would always be able to guess. It's great. Um, oh, it's LeBron James. Ugh, gross. What does he have? Extra toes. Yeah, well, I LeBron. played a lot of fucking sports, man. I don't remember. And then I wore boots in the military for fucking years after that. <laughs> like, what are they doing to their fucking feet here? I don't know, man. Who fucking knows? But uh, Dion on that show, dude, when he pulled off the socks, I just I, I started gagging in front of my child. My kid was like, what's what's wrong with that? That guy's feet. I'm like, I don't know. Yep. Get that off the screen. Alec. Get it off the screen i like it right now <coughs> can't believe it you, you like it um you on guess who would be great by the way mm -hmm. um i think you'd actually be able to fool the people so i'd like to see who is one of the contestants not one of the judges. i could do either one yeah because uh, you have to know about any question they're going to ask you mm -hmm. regarding that thing and i think you'd be able to do it i have a lot of knowledge about a bunch of random bullshit the other portion of it though the people can lie and just piggyback off of other people's answers so mm -hmm. it's tough and then we give you a certain amount of questions, but I think you could, you could I be, would call out the liars all the time, unless that's one of the rules where you can't. I would be like, what she said is bullshit, and here's why. Yo, then, yeah, so you can, you can say that. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah well, you yeah. can say that during the show, I would, and people have. I don't have, uh, my face doesn't work the way a normal face does, so no one would ever know <laughs> that I was lying. Oh, man. All right, to recap, kids, I'm going Clippers. You're going Lakers. This is what we're doing if there is a season here. <clears throat> yeah, I think the Lakers are going to win, although I want, the in this scenario, I would prefer it if the Clippers win. Three to one odds, man. Uh, it's, hard, it's hard for me to shy away. Paul George needed the rest too, man. Mm -hmm. um, him and Kawhi should be fully healthy for I mean, this. the Clippers are uh, pretty goddamn deep. Whew. They've, I mean... They have Reggie Jackson, who, by the way, Reggie Jackson, a year, not, not last year, but the year before last year, led the league in shooting percentage in crunch time. A lot of people know that. He's one of the most clutch players in the oh, NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they have Lou Williams, who's fucking, I don't, I don't, he's day-to-day -day right now. I don't know what's wrong with Doc him. Doc Rivers is a great coach. So He is. He's a little, he's kind of a knucklehead. But, uh, I mean, Kawhi Leonard and, and Zubak and fucking Paul George and Patrick Beverly, that is a goddamn defensive powerhouse. Yes. And, and if you need defense, Marcus Morris can, can fucking good. drop 20 in a game, yes, too, dude. anytime. He's... He he's averages seventeen and a half. And this that year. was Holy a late shit. season trade. So um, yeah, I'm all in on the Clippers at three to one. That could really put a put a little bingo in my pocket, dude. So uh, appreciate we'll you uh, tuning in, kids. We'll be back tomorrow. Go to mybookie.com promo code Drinking Bros. Bet with us or against us. You can go Lakers. You can go Clippers. Um, and then put some money on the sleepers just in case uh, one of those fuckers comes through. Make sure you stock up on Kill Cliff because you're going to need to pour vodka into something. All, dude, imagine what we're about to head into, too. If this goes off, right? Let's say yeah. all this shit goes off. Um, NFL, college football, NBA playoffs, and finals will all be going on. Over the, the course of like three months, it's going to be nonstop. The month of September will yeah. be the greatest month in sports history. Especially if the NHL is playing their playoffs yeah, at dude. the same time. I mean, it's like it'll be every single day there will be one or two things minimum on television. Every single one of our wives <laughs> and girlfriends will hate us for at least until Christmas. Probably, yeah. Um, That's so fine. Back up the truck on Christmas. Just, uh, you know, find someone that likes sports. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good luck with that. For D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. Good night, everyone.